Hello, I'm Curtis Jones. I'm at the Morgan Memorial Library in Montgomery, Alabama, and I'm presenting a program uh, I entitled Promulgation 101. And the reason I entitled it Promulgation 101 so that it uh, sounds a little more like a college course. Many of the college courses I took, the introductory level, were 101. Promulgation, that explanation is publishing a book or to make open declaration or to proclaim formally. So that, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about being a self-publishing author and it's an interesting subject. It's uh, something that's come to its time now and we want to talk about being a publisher. But before I get into that I want to talk a little bit about the history of publishing or the history of print. History of publishing and reading. And when you're talking about publishing you need to also consider reading because publishing does no good if people don't know how to read. So we're going to touch on that a little bit. Uh, most of you are familiar with the Gutenberg Bible. The Gutenberg Bible was printed in 1454. That's a long time ago. It's a very old publication and many people consider it one of the first publications done commercially. Uh, first mass-produced work, the Gutenberg Bible, because he had started using a printing press so instead of writing every character down he could run the paper through there and use the press to print the pages. The ability to read uh, was rare for many years after the onset of printing. The first commercially used offset printer was invented in 1903, so a little over a century ago. And it was invented by Ira Washington Rubel. This sets the stage for the ability of books to be generated for the public, where everybody could own their own book. And it's important to think about that. Education had to catch up with printing. Schools became compulsory in 1852 and it was as a follow-up from a law published in Britain in 1647. So it, it's kind of a new thing that so many people can read. The progress to what we see today was a slow and difficult process. It didn't happen very quickly. Uh, in the not too distant past, most of us wouldn't have been able to read, let alone to write. So it, it's, it's kind of a new thing when you look at the world history. Understand what we are looking at or looking into doing is a precious talent not afforded to most of the people in the world's history. So it, it's, it's nearly brand new. It isn't as common in the world today as you might think, being able to read and, and to read well. In the past 20 years, the presence of the ability to read will only increase as it did in the past. Now it is 74% and they expect in 20 years about 85% of the population will be able to read. And that's good news for someone wanting to write a book or several books. Given the advancements today, you can succeed as a writer. And that's what we want to talk about as we go through. Uh, 20 years ago, to get a book published, now we're going to talk about using commercial publishers, to get a book published, you submitted a finished manuscript to a publishing house. 
many weeks waiting to hear back from that publishing house. It was evaluated usually by one or two people and they decided whether your book was worth printing or not. Rejection was what occurred most of the time when you sent a work in to be published. Applying to as many publishers as possible was required if you wanted to get a book published. Each publisher had requirements for how to present the book for them to evaluate. Rejection was made for any error in the presented format. If you didn't follow their instructions, they rejected it without looking any further. And very few were ever published. And it's important to think about that because it's a, it's a completely different game today. If your manuscript was accepted by a publishing company, it was just the beginning. You were at the mercy of the publishing house as to the price and the number of books that they printed for publishing. If the sales were low, the book simply went out of print. I, I've called and tried to order books before and they'd tell me they're out of print. What happened was the sales went down and they stopped printing them. And as soon as they run out of stock, you can't get that book anymore. The writer had almost no control over any part of the work that they did in those scenarios. With a publishing house, when they were through with your book, it's over. You, you are out of business in that book. It is still conducted in the same way today with publishing houses. With most publishing houses, they have specific criteria you have to meet. You don't meet it, you don't get to the second step. It doesn't uh, despair. I don't want you to despair. Because we have come full circle back to when the Gutenberg Bible was printed. You can become a publisher or a publishing house through the ebook publishers. And that's what we're going to talk about today because that's what I want you to understand. Electronic publishing is what e publishing or e books refer to, electronic books. And they're on the little devices like a Nook Reader or or one of the other Kindles. Companies like Amazon with a Kindle and then of course the Nook and other reading platforms is where these books are published. The least difficult of all of these, as far as I could tell, is KDP, which stands for Kindle Direct Publishing. And that's what I generally use. Uh, it was originally called Digital Text platform. But KDP is a lot easier to say and keep up with. This format is used by authors and publishers to independently publish their work, their books, directly to the Kindle store as an ebook or an electronic book. This format was launched by Amazon in November 2007. So it isn't that long ago that this all began. This platform allows you to publish directly to the public. You have many options when publishing this way. And we'll talk a little about that a little later on. Uh, we'll speak to the difficulties in this process as well as we go through this course. I put like a boss. And you know, we, we all talk about how nice it would be to be a boss, but I want you to stop and understand being a boss along with the perks that come with that brings some responsibility. And the boss has many responsibilities. And if you are publishing this way, you become the boss and take on those responsibilities. You are responsible when you use this system without any outside help, and you could do it without outside help. But it's often better to take advantage of the help that you can get. Everything you produce will bear your mark. So be careful while you're publishing this way. You have to be a self-starter. 
You, you don't have somebody telling you, get up, go to work at 8 o'clock, do this, and when you get through, go home. You're a self-starter if you're going to publish. You can't be fired, but your quality will determine the amount of success you have. You set your own hours and what you want to accomplish each day, each month, each week. And, and in that way, you become the boss. Uh, remember, this is a young industry. So think outside the box. What I'm, what I'm trying to relay to you is a platform or a base to start from. And from there, you build on your own abilities and learn how to do this. And you may do things much different than I do. I do book signings. And since I'm not working for a publishing house, I have to set up the time, go meet the people, and establish a time to come and produce uh, my books, because I have to buy my own books, take them with me, and then I sign the books for people who come and buy them, and others that have had my books and brought, I sign them too. Do whatever you have to do to be a success at what you're trying to accomplish. The internet has simplified self-publishing, and it wouldn't be possible to have self-publishing and e-books without the internet. Since the internet has come into its own, publishing a book no longer depends upon a publishing company somewhere in New York or Denver or wherever they may be located. It depends on you at your own home, connected to the internet. You now have the ability to self-publish whatever you write. That's why I say it's important to think about what you're writing. All laws regarding plagiarism still apply to self-publishing and e-book, as they do to brick-and-mortar stores and paperback books. Uh, you are expected to self-regulate and to include information regarding where you acquire certain information, uh, for example, Wikipedia, and tell them where to find it and how to look it up, or what to look up in order to verify what you've said as you use someone else's work. You must include the location that can be verified when others check it out. It's important to understand that. And we have not become the Wild West where anything goes in e-publishing because there are certain rules and regulations we always have to meet. Now, having said this, there is at least one book in every person. Have you ever sat around and thought about a story of something that happened to you? And, and you just so enjoy relaying that story to other people and letting them hear and enjoy what you experienced. That is a good start for a book. The difficulties in publishing is down, for writing it down for others to be able to read it and enjoy it. Now that, that's the only hard part about telling the story and uh, I'll describe how I got to where my books were as we go through this. Because you are here today, you may already have what it takes to write a book. You're, you're searching and trying to find a way to get it out to the public. And, and I hope through this you will be able to do so. Writing comes in many forms, poems, short stories, novellas. There are also other forms of writings, and I, I don't profess to be an expert at it, but what I do is mostly short stories and poems. Now, writing is somewhat unique in that it requires a person to be a self-starter. You, you have to make yourself sit down and write it down. And then you have to read through it, make sure it flows well. And people can understand and want to be uh, further involved in the story. To avoid distress later, commit to what you are starting. Doing so will save you frustration later and further down the road because it, it sometimes is difficult to make yourself a self-starter. And, and I can't help you much with the traditional publishing, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about e-publishing. 
And there are still people who would rather do the traditional publishing, and it, it does make it a little easier once you meet all their criteria, and if they want that particular kind of story. The traditional route, until recently all books were published by publishing companies. There is a vetting process through the publishing companies, and few people make it past the obstacles that they put there. Some of the difficulties include full printed manuscripts with double space lines so that they have room to make corrections, uh, single sided pages, some want block printing where you don't indent for paragraphs, but you have to meet every bit of their criteria in order for them to even read what you've written. And many rejection letters are sent out. Do it all over again with a different publisher if you've been rejected, if you're going to go that way. You uh, could spend hours and send dozens of manuscripts to companies without any luck. There are many variables involved, and you have to be very careful when you read and study what they want. Uh, then along came the internet, and the internet is what has made publishing so much easier nowadays. Independent publishing, or indie publishing is what the industry calls it. Uh, in the beginning, I had to find a company to print my first book, because when I wrote my first book, it was before 2007, or 20, 2007. Uh, so, so I couldn't publish it on the internet. In, in order to find a company, I had to search through the internet, but they weren't publishing there. And I searched through the internet and I found a company that would publish my book. And I had to jump through all kinds of hoops to get it published. And then when I got it published, I ordered books, they sent them to me and I sold them. And then I had to reorder as I needed. There are several awards in this industry today, and you could research it on the internet and, and see some of the awards they give. Some, most of them have to do with originality or, or the number of copies you sell and the people's interest in it. Uh, I'm only instructing on being an independent publisher as a self-publisher. That's done through companies like KDP, part of the Amazon company, and I use them because they were the simplest and easiest to get this done. They, they had all the instructions I needed. I believe it could be the wave of the future, independent publishing. When publishing, it cannot, uh, when publishing, it cannot go out of publication. Like some of the books I tried to order, they told me they were out of publication or out of print. But with an ebook, it never goes out of print, at least in the ebook format. Now, I'll talk a little more about paperbacks as we go through this. Uh, I'm just starting to convert some of my books into what is looks like the new wave coming, and that is audio books. And uh, you could do that yourself on the internet, or you could have other people do it for you. So let's talk about the nuts and bolts. First, write the book. <laughs> First, write the book. You don't have to have it finished, but at least get a good foundation out so you understand where the book's going and have some kind of framework. Uh, computers are notoriously unreliable. Save your work often and on separate backup systems. I have hard drives and I have two computers. One's devoted to my writing and one I keep everything on as well as the one that's devoted to writing. And I have them on flash drives and on disks. I, I keep copies all over the place of everything and you need to do that. Uh, most of the things I have written began their life as short stories. Uh, only later to be included in ebooks. Then, when Amazon included the ability to publish in paperback, I joined in and started doing that. 
Each change requires a little effort and a small rewrite to make the transition look better because from an ebook that fits on a Kindle to a paperback the size you choose will alter the way it's printed on the page so you have to go through and, and reshift everything just a little bit. Uh, it takes effort, but it's not really very difficult. Anybody could do it. You can do all these things yourself. You don't have to have someone do it for you. KDP will have all the instructions in simple to understand language on their site teaching you how to publish because they want you to be successful. Your success is their success. KDP have all the instructions, okay. Uh, don't overcomplicate the process. Think of it like a book report. This is how I work nowadays. Uh, what you do, you start it out as a book report, I do, and then that's my framework. From there, I, I take and add elements to the story, uh, things that will cause you to get excited or details of this movement or that, what it looks like. Don't be afraid to ask Google anything because Google knows when things happen. So if you want to be accurate, use Google as you're writing. Always be watching around you for things that will help in your stories. Other people are a wonderful source of information, believe it or not. There are interesting things happening around you most of the time if you watch and look. Use or uh, find useful tools to aid you. Uh, I use spell check on the computer uh, where I do most of my writing, as well as on my telephone. I ask it to spell certain things for me. Uh, I have a dear friend that helps me. She loves to read what I've written, and she loves to check spell for me, as well as look at grammar and the flow of the story. And I'm sure you will find things that will help you in the process. Our skill sets grow differently for each one of us. Uh, some of us have more talents in some area and less in, in others. And, and we end up growing these talents to make us a better writer. We will grow as we need in, in the areas that we need to grow as long as we don't give up or faint. Never compare yourself with others. The differences are what make us so unique and make people want to learn of the things we write. Okay, getting started. I've written several stories that will never see the light of day. After I've written them, I, I wasn't happy with them and they didn't seem to have a good flow. So they, they've never been printed. Uh, you'll probably do that yourself as you start. But save those stories anyway because I've, I've had to use parts of stories that I rejected to make other stories work well. Even when you are editing later, save your work and save it often. It is easier to discard several copies of a work than to lose everything that you've done. And that's happened to me before. Uh, when I write the new story, often it's very different than the first story. I could remember parts of it, but the new story will be very different because I didn't save it. As your writing skills improve, you might want to get a computer dedicated only to your writing. And it took me probably four or five years before I decided to get a separate computer dedicated just to the writing and, and the work I do with books. This will help you ensure from occasional loss. Often I don't give a title until inspiration strikes me. Uh, I may not call the title until I'm over halfway through with a book and what I've written on it. I'll talk about that as we go through. You can write an epic 
Of course, that's a pretty big undertaking. Uh, you could write a novel, a short story, a poem. I started very small. I started with short stories. By writing short stories, you will hone your skills as a writer, uh, save them, they may aid in epics someday if you progress that far. Uh, at KDP, you can publish short stories and they remain saved. I have some of the things I had written that never got published saved on Amazon. And, and I go back and read them periodically, trying to figure a way to use them and get them into a format that would work well. Then sometimes I publish them, sometimes I don't. I hope I haven't discouraged you. It's a wonderful way to express yourself. And, and, and other people will find it interesting, I promise you. Again, the place where I do my publishing is on the internet, www.kdp.com. And they'll give you the instructions you need to publish on Amazon. And you don't have to tie up any money in it like I did when I was uh, having to go through publishers and having them send me books. Uh, they have many tutorials on publishing and other services that you could find there, such as editing. They offer professional editing for a price. They offer voices to produce audio books that uh, are very, very well read. Uh, if you go through KDP, it will be a good way to get started. Now, there are other companies that do publishing like this. Uh, at the site for KDP, you will be instructed on how to set up an author's page because that's an important thing to have if you're going to write a book. Uh, and it's just part of their service. The author's page will be a presence on the internet that's permanent as long as you're published with them through Amazon. As you set up, you will have to give certain information, tax information to Amazon. And this is so that you can be paid. <coughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. And we know if we're writing a book, it would be nice to be paid. They will pay you the way you request to be paid as well, by check or direct deposit. And it's important that you understand the differences in those two things. If you choose check, which I did to start with I, when I first published on Amazon, it could be weeks or even months before you get any money sent to you. You see, they only send a check out when you have enough money or reach the threshold they consider for writing a check. So it's important that you uh, consider that when you're doing this. If you're selling a lot of copies, then a check is just fine. But I opted for direct deposit because they will deposit as little as one cent into your account. And I have had that happen before. <laughs> Uh, after you have set up all the required pages, you can go to the publish page to publish the work you've got. And you don't have to have it done all in that same day. You, you could publish it and then maybe look at it and get a rewrite and then go back and republish it right over the publication you just did and it will bring the changes into it. So it's important that you, you know you have some options. Uh, when you are ready to publish your work, you will be guided through each step until the work is available for purchase. And it's important to understand that. They take you step by step through this publishing. They ask uh, for things like writer's name, editor's name, uh, Leave the editor blank if you are, in fact, the editor yourself, because it causes some difficulty. And uh, they ask you, do you own the rights to this work? And if you have written this work and not copied it, you do own the rights for it. 
uh, when you reach a point, you are asked to upload your manuscript. And this may take a little while, depending on how big your manuscript is. Uh, if they're short stories, they upload in one or two minutes. If they're many chapters long, then it may take a little while longer. Uh, you will be asked to create a cover for your short story, whether it's Kindle or a paperback book, you still will be asked to create a cover. Uh, you can use one that you already have designed yourself, or they will guide you through their many, many cover designs. And, and they're established so that where your print goes on the cover and, and the, the cover itself becomes easy to see. And you pick out what you like and the design that they have. And you could change it into hundreds of kinds of designs. The process includes everything to give you a professional looking book. When working on a cover, you will be asked to write several articles to be placed on the cover, especially on the back cover. Uh, having done this a few times, I already know that I have to have those ready and I could copy and paste them and they will put them in to size so that they fit in the designated area. If the book is big enough to have a ridge or a spine, uh, it will be auto-filled with the title and the author's name on the very back. But if it's small enough where well, they can't put that on there, it won't it won't go on. Uh, you will also be asked what size you would like your books to be printed in. I use two specific sizes and I'm thinking about using some others, but the size of the book will determine how many pages are in it. There are also uh, the two different sizes that I use. I've talked about that. It makes a difference to what they charge in the uh, paperback printing books too. Uh, the site will direct you in what to do if there's a problem in the process because sometimes as, as it goes into printing the pages don't line up quite right. You'll be asked uh, to review your book that you just published to see if you approve of it and look at every page when you do that because uh, you'll be able to turn the pages like an ebook, whether it's paperback or ebook. And you need to pay attention because you want things to line up the way they ought to so it looks more professional. Their system does quite a lot of checks, but there are still things and errors that can occur as it's printed. And you don't want any errors getting into the published work or the published book. You can also order a uh, or several proof copies if you're doing paperback. And uh, when I first started doing this, they would send me some, and they were just like the printed book. And then later, they started writing proof on the cover, so you knew it was a proof book, and you couldn't sell it. And then later, they said, uh, proof book, and on the back says, not for sale. <laughs> so so you can't order proof books. They're They're the same price as you would pay for the books you would get anyway. So check all the borders when you're checking your book out and make sure that they're the same as you turn through the pages. Check that the chapters start at the top of pages, either the right or the left. You could leave blank pages too, but the blank pages end up costing you more because you pay per page. Uh, also look at the pagination. Uh, that's the page numbers and, and the way Amazon talks about it, pagination would be the first few pages in the book where you've got author name and, and uh, table of contents and such. You could list them in Roman numeral one, two, three, until you get to chapter one, and then you start with Ar Aramaic numbers like number one, number two, number three. And at the end of the book, you could also use the letters A, B, C. And those, those are the pagination that they talk about. And you can set them up with page breaks and start them like that. And I, I can't give you everything you need to check today, but take advantage of the education available on their site because they will tell you all this stuff. I didn't know any of it when I started. After 
All this would come to the price page. Uh, in setting the price, you should consider several things. What is the cost of the paperback book that you're printing? Is it a big one? It could cost a little more. If it's very small, it could cost a little less. But there are certain expenses in printing that they pass on to you that aren't really involved there in an ebook. Uh, for the Kindle, it's less uh, to publish. And so a little smaller price is what I usually do for the Kindle books compared to the paperback book. But most of the people I know want paperbacks so they can carry it around. I'm, I'm kind of that way. I, I have e-readers, but I like my paperbacks <laughs> or printed books. This page also includes distribution. And I, I'm really impressed with the way uh, Kindle Direct does it because I sell books in Italy, in England, in Australia, in Germany. I sell books in a lot of different places through the Amazon platform. And it it's, makes me feel pretty good. <laughs> uh, we're paid differently from different countries, too, because they use uh, different systems of money. Some are pounds, and we use dollars. And, and so it, it changes the way you're paid. And, and there's usually a little more expense involved in translating the books, so the, we get a little less resources back to ourselves. Think what a wonderful age that we live in where you can control most of what you create as an independent publisher. Think of that. It's, it's an amazing thing that I don't have to depend on a publishing company, and if I misspell all the words in my book, it still goes out just like that. They don't correct them. The first book I wrote was From Time to Eternity. So I'll give you a little history on how I got into where I'm at, and so that you understand that anybody can do this. And I think it's important that everybody writes their story. I started this because I wanted my grandchildren to know about our family history. They lived in Oklahoma. We moved to Florida. And I, I worked down in Florida, and so did my wife. And so I wanted to pass the stories on. That's why I started writing these short stories, so that they would know our family history. And it evolved into a book. But uh, from time to eternity, had a sister that died of cancer. And I loved her dearly. And I wanted comfort, and I was preaching at that time, so I wrote the book From Time to Eternity to help me understand and comfort myself, and people liked it, so I ended up publishing it as a paperback and started selling it. It eventually became an e-book on Amazon. Uh, it's a religious book that brings comfort in the time of loss. I also had to find a publisher when I did this. Uh, and go through a whole different set of hoops to get it published. And, and it was still an independent, not a big professional publishing house. Uh, that was 15 years ago. It is my most passionate book of all the books that I've written. Uh, this is still mo more popular than any of my other books, but I think it's because they haven't given them a chance yet. Uh, some people called it timeless. Uh, the second book that I wrote is Dad's Old Truck, Volume 1. It wasn't Volume 1 when I wrote it. Uh, the second work I started as a collection of short stories to pass along to my grandchildren. People liked them, and they wanted to know where they could get them. And that's when I began to pub publish these as short stories on Amazon. And I have uh, 40 short stories on Amazon, and and a lot of them, or most of them, have been incorporated into the books. Uh, these were short stories that carried me from about seven years old until about 15 years old. And they contain the idea that the way children would look at things. And uh, so that, that's how they were written. They include stories about an injury my mother had when I was about seven years old. Uh, they include stories like stealing flowers from a 
cemetery on a Memorial Day night <laughs> to take to my folks and show them what wonderful children we were. <laughs> but it, it, it tells the whole story about that. Uh, living on a farm, childhood memories, uh, a lightning storm that came through that was so frightening, and, and Christmases. That's what that book is about. The next book I wrote is called Dad's Old Truck 2, and it was kind of a continuation of those short stories. And it was the third book that I'd wrote. And it was a fun book to write. I had begun to enjoy the stories that I was telling, and, and the more I thought about them, the more they came back to me with more details. It was about my young life and the uh, adversity compared to other people. This book contains stories that stood out in my mind as a child, some from early childhood, but they went until I was about 16 years old when my life made a big change. Uh, they are stories about school events, living under a bridge, <laughs> me and my family. It wasn't very long, about a week, but <laughs> to me it was a wonderful adventure. Uh, it was about high school. One time I ran away from home. And there's other events that are included on that, and they're, they're from the perspective of a teenager. And you get the intensity of a teenager, uh, a teenager's life, and their perspective on life. This book also started as short stories. It includes enough of the foolishness of a teenager to keep people interested in, in reading it. And I'm, I'm glad I was able to write that. And I, I believe everybody's got stories like this in their life if they would sit and do it. Uh, Imagination, another one of my books. And uh, it was the fourth book that I wrote. It was written to be whimsical. I wrote for contests several times and entered contests and most of my writings were published in e-magazines but they were far enough down I didn't get any money for it. But they were good stories nonetheless so I kept them and they ended up being published in the book called Imagination. Uh, much of this work was fantasy. Stories like Afterwards, uh, a man driving a car after a long night of driving and it's his mind and his thoughts as he has an accident. Uh, What's Behind the Green Door was a contest I entered and that's one of the short stories in this book. It's about a blind date and how a man walked down a long corridor toward the door where his blind date would be and the thoughts that run through his mind. Uh, the Man and the Angel, The Curse, uh, the curse is a story about a little boy that finds a flying rock. In fact, that was the name of that story to start with, but uh, I, I changed it because it was uh, mostly the way he let his imagination bring adventures to his life during a hard time. And Reflections of Desire is in that book. It's also a story about... Uh, a man having to go to secondhand stores, I call them junk stores, uh, with his wife and walk around all day looking at whatnots in little stores, and he finds a magic box. Anyway, that, those are the stories I put in there. Couldn't put them in any of my other books, so they went into a book by themselves. This book came along in, in small parts because they were short stories as well, and I continued to write. Uh, it has several stories and a collection of poems. As I continue to write poems, I republish that book from time to time and add the new poems that I've written. Uh, this book also includes a poem that was written by my grandfather back in 1926 about an Oklahoma prison called McAllister. It's one of my favorite books. I like it better than any of the others because it's so whimsical. Uh, Love Endures All Things is another book I wrote. This is the fifth book I wrote, and it was written about a year after my wife. We'd been married 47 years, about a year after she passed away. Uh, this is also one of the passionate books that I wrote. This book is a telling of the first 15 years that Stephanie and I were married, and it goes through the ups and the downs, 
and the funny things that happened along the way. It tells how we met, how we grew, and it tells how we endured the times that uh, would have caused other people to maybe give up and move on. At the end of the book, I included what my wife had written about our first 15 years that I didn't know anything about. And after she passed away, I was cleaning out some of the things, and I found a tablet she'd used in a college class in 86 describing our first 15 years and how she thought about it. And it was almost like she spoke to me from the grave, and it was, it was very interesting. She thought about the same things I did. If you can put passion into your work, it will translate to a love of your book or your work. And this book was kind of hard for me to write because it struck pretty close to home. Uh, getting there is the next book I wrote. It, uh, some, some of the stories are passed down from generation to generation. Uh, it is a work that includes the history of my myself and my wife, my parents, my grandparents, and great-grandparents, and some of the stories that came down, and I thought they should be passed on because it talks about their life and the chores they did and the, and the travels they made and how difficult those were. Uh, the title is a play on words, and I didn't come up with this title until I'd almost finished this book. It's called Getting There because the things we experience in life will determine where we end up in the future. The last work is uh, The 72 Hours That Changed the World. It's also a religious book, and uh, it was written because of some studies I'd made over most of my life, because I'd preached for about 20 years, but it describes the three days and the three nights that the Lord spent in the grave. And uh, I'd had a lot of people ask me about it, so I finally wrote a book about it. And I, I'm starting other books because I don't think you should quit writing. I'm starting another series of books, as children's books, that I put a human face on my two dogs. One of them's called Booger. So we call him this book, The Adventures of Booger Man and Chili Dog, which is another one of my dogs. I, I appreciate the time you've spent with me on this, and I hope I've helped you. Don't be afraid to tell your story. Thank you very much.